dawn breaks over the Cumberland Mountains. As a symphony of sound fills the forest at Frozen Head State Park. Most people don't realize that the forest is actually a very loud place to be if they just stop and listen. But birds aren't the only ones making music this morning. Ornithologist Melinda Welton has also joined in, using a portable speaker to play the sound of a bird that can be hard to see, the cerulean warbler. We do three minutes of listening, and I record all the, the neotropical birds during that time, and then a full minute of Cerulean Warbler territorial song playback, and then another three minutes of listening and watching. This scientific study is part of Melinda's research on the Cerulean's migration habits. What we know very little about is the migration phase. So this is really just a preliminary study just to see what I can find and we may do something more intensive. We find out that this is a major stopover location. Spending their winters in South America, these neotropical migrants live and breed in North America, sometimes flying over 3,000 miles in one trip. This happens to be pretty much the southern limit of the range of the bird. It's also the very best habitat for Ceruleans anywhere in the range. That habitat is large old trees on steep slopes. This is a mixed hardwood forest. Older growth, we've not had a lot of disturbance in this forest uh, since the early part of the 20th century. If you can see over here, there's a bit of a gap from uh, a large tree probably uh, falling down, which is a characteristic of a mature forest. The light allows the lateral branches to develop, and that's the preferred feeding area for a cerulean. But old forests with big trees are getting harder to find. As the trees begin to disappear, so do the birds at an alarming rate. It's pretty serious. Since the breeding bird survey began, we've lost about 80% of the population. But the ceruleans aren't the only ones disappearing. Right there, that's a... Uh, American Red Start. A lot of the neotropical migrants in general were finding declines in population. While Melinda hikes up the mountain, over 500 miles away at Fort Morgan, Alabama, the rising sun also casts a golden glow along the Gulf of Mexico, home for a wide range of beach nesting birds, like the brown pelican. But it's also home, at least temporarily, for thousands of migratory songbirds who traveled hundreds of miles across the Gulf of Mexico. Their arrival provides the perfect opportunity for a group of special volunteers to gather some important information. 17. They are members of the Hummer Bird Study Group, a nonprofit organization started by Bob and Martha Sargent. We're trying to study these neotropical migrants. Many of those, the numbers within the species are declining and we're trying to learn as much as we can about them to protect them. Every spring and fall, Bob and his group of dedicated volunteers set up nets to catch and ban birds as they finish their trip across the Gulf and reach land. 125. Cindy Routledge traveled here all the way from Clarksville, Tennessee, hoping to help birds like this woodpecker, a yellow-bellied sapsucker. They have a highly specialized tongue that has like bristles on the end of the tongue and they lap that sap. We measure the wing cord, the tail, the tarsus, a measurement from the knee to the middle of the foot. We measure the bill, then we weigh the bird. The weight will give us an indication of how healthy that bird is. Although the information gathered during the banding process is important. Can you hear? Yes, sir. What does it sound like? Electric motor. <laughs> Helping people like 10-year-old Blake Johnson connect with nature is the real payoff. If we can have a little child's hand and we can put a bird in it and let him hear its heartbeat and release it, we got him for life. It kind of makes you feel good just knowing that the bird is free. There's a wealth of knowledge that we've learned from coming here, not just about the birds, but about conservation. If we could go back. 
Avid birder Melanie Furr and her family traveled here from Atlanta, hoping to spot birds they hadn't seen before, and ended up adopting some. We had a ruby-throated hummingbird, the common yellow throat, and I had a northern parula. It's pretty amazing. They look so much smaller when you have them in your hand than when you're looking through the binoculars. Very special. It's an experience Melanie hopes has a lasting impact on her kids. When I had it in my hand and uh, it flew off, I could feel its heart beating really, really fast. It was really cool. <laughs> Birds are beautiful creatures, and to see them in their natural environment, it's really interesting to me. We hope to be a source of information here. Yesterday, this female hooded warbler was almost certainly in the Yucatan Peninsula all day long, show and tell with adults and children. Open this hand. You don't have to throw him. Just open this and raise it up. <laughs> An informed public is the best way to protect the habitat. If you can protect the habitat, you protect the birds and other creatures. While Tennessee has done a good job of protecting that habitat so far, coal mining in the Cerulean's northeast breeding grounds and sun-grown coffee farms in their southern wintering grounds are destroying critical habitat. You should look for shade-grown coffee. If the shade is provided by native trees, you can actually get very high densities of birds wintering in these areas. From buying shade-grown coffee to letting parts of your yard go wild for wildlife, to supporting organizations that help protect the land. We can all have a role to play in helping these birds survive. They can't speak for themselves. We have to speak out and tell people to conserve them. Let people know that the birds are special. These migrants have a right to be here. They were here before the first man ever set foot on this continent. They're glorious, and I think that they have a right to exist, and we have a responsibility to keep them here. The fact that there are fewer of these little birds sitting on tree branches might not seem all that important, but their disappearance is a haunting harbinger for our own lives. Well, if we start to see decline in the ceruleans or any of our wildlife species here, it's going to have a direct impact on us. There's going to be a trickle effect. Ultimately. What we do to the birds, we do to ourselves. If we make this planet, this USA, this Alabama, this Tennessee, where it's not hospitable enough to have bird life there, human life will suffer at the same time. I'm Ken Tucker on the Wild Side. On a sad note, Master Birdbander Bob Sargent passed away just as we finished this story. Bob's wife Martha initially got him interested in hummingbirds, and it wasn't long before they started banding them together. Martha tells us they banded thousands of birds together over the years from their own yard across the south and even here in Tennessee. An outspoken conservationist, Bob touched a lot of lives as a teacher, friend, and an advocate for the wild. He will be missed.